Michigan basketball is so unbelievably frustrating. And I just, I, I can't, I can't believe we're at this place now. Ward Manuel, you got heat all year. Do the right thing. You know what that right thing is. That's all I'm going to say. Alrighty, welcome back to another episode of the Scarlet and Blue Show. Garrison, we were going to record yesterday. Mm -hmm. I, so I had, I have had, it was bad yesterday, had, had the old COVID. So I was like, can't record today. To which point. I think you really we, did? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It's I've not, never had, I've never had it. <laughs> you've never had COVID? Dude, I'm seven for seven on negative tests. Oh my goodness. This is my fourth go around with it. And you're still here, buddy. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Well, let's get political now. <laughs> I was going to say, I know it was a thing. <laughs> and there, YouTube's going to flag that. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, you sent over, though, yesterday, oddly mm -hmm. or funny enough, you sent over yesterday topics for the episode. And it went, one, Mike Hart out. Two, right back coach prospects. <laughs> <laughs> so... If it wasn't for COVID and us delaying, we would have recorded yeah. that with before everything else would have happened. Right. And uh Gary, what what major news happened yesterday, Garrison? Uh Ohio State coach Tony running back coach Tony Alford, uh coach of eight years, decided to join the team in Ann Arbor. He did. He sure did. To the surprise of almost everybody. Did anybody yeah. see that coming? No. I, no, <laughs> no. I, I it, it was a uh, huge news. Um, but I'm, I mean, I don't think there's any way you could predict that. Honestly, I don't think there's any way you could. So let's hear. So from the Michigan perspective, we'll start here. Yeah, and then we'll go to you because obviously I think everyone wants to hear your perspective on this more than than anybody else's. Michigan, I, I think, was surprised to see what happened with Mike Hart. Does I don't know if the full story is out, but he took a personal leave for a while. With Mike Hart not coming back, then the, the prospects of the running back coach were going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, Tony Alford comes by. So what's the sentiment down there with you guys? Because you look at this, and if the roles were reversed and Michigan lost their running back coach to go to Ohio State, with that running back room, with the expectations that are in Columbus going into the next year, it make a little more sense. But it went the other way. What's the thought? I mean, I I, I had some fun with it. Like you saw, I had, you, yeah, you saw, I had some you saw, fun. With it was it. a good entertainment. Yeah, little little few, little few uh, Drake lyrics, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh, I think most Buckeye fans, just like myself, were all shocked. Uh, players were shocked. Uh, I mean, I saw like Jermaine Matthews posted out, "Stand on what you preach." Um, so uh, clearly, some of those guys are upset as we are. But it's not so much we're upset that he left. Um, Tony Alford had a, I don't want to say beg, but he had to lobby for his job when Ryan Day took over. He was going to be let go. Um, and then the, the year know why prior, that was? was that did, did Day have his own guy? Why? Why would he? He, he was he was cleaning shop. <laughs> he was cleaning shop on the offensive side. Mm, okay. Like like get me because like Alex Grinch was cut. Like there was coaches that were cut. Like mm. Ryan Day has, he's not afraid to fire coaches. He's had a, he's shown that he will do that. Um, and you, you got to think about it at that time, the only running back that he had helped get to the league, I mean, help, he had Ezekiel Elliott for one year. And it wasn't the national championship year where he went crazy. So, and then you look at, if you look at some of his recruiting classes, and I, I, was, I had a conversation with Lawson about this actually. Like, for a lot of recruiters, most kids don't pan out, right? But almost 85% of the kids that he recruits do not pan out. Most of them had transferred or switched positions. Crowley. Um, uh, who am I thinking of? Still Chambers. Guys like that. Uh, so, of course, he has Trayvon, who's going to go to the league. So, that he has that. And he has um, – uh, this is so bad. Uh, he has – J.K. Dobbins. So 
He does yes. have them. But overall, I mean, I'm not – it's just surprising that he went to Michigan. It is. Uh, I would, That's an understatement. I, would, I mean, what, what, what am I supposed to be overly surprising? I don't know how else to put it. It's, I'm just surprised. Yeah. I'm surprised no, it's, by it. You know? It's incredibly surprising. Yeah. And so um, I, I would love to see the particulars of it. Uh, I mean, Michael, Mike Hart was making 550 grand a year. We were paying, um, we were paying Alfred 700 and 700 and 775, yeah, 775,000 and $500. So I would, I would have had to expect he, he, he had to leave for close to a million. I, I would, I would, I would expect that. Um, yeah, you would expect that if there, if there was no, beef or bad blood there because yeah why would you leave well yes that's that next question was there something with ryan day was there something with the staff did chip kelly come in and they're not seeing eye to eye did chip kelly I wouldn't be surprised. Run, run the run game i mean he's a quarterback coach I, I, but he was brought to improve the running game so i mean i i think what you're saying right there bryce has a lot of validity to it i i i, I agree with it I, I think there was some type of bad blood there um, at the same time, I mean, this, I thought this is a new for Tony Alford. Uh, I put on Twitter, he's completely the trifecta. Coach at Notre Dame for six years, came to Ohio State for eight, nine. Now he's at Michigan. So you, you covered the whole, the, the biggest Midwest programs there is. So, yeah, you really did. You hit them um, all. Some, I, I was listening to some, uh, like Jay Pickle said, like at Ohio State, he didn't see any room for, 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 uh, for advancement. But I mean, where has the advancement been at any point of your career? So, and, and I, I don't, where are you going to advance at Michigan? You are going to be the running back coach at Michigan. You will never be an OC there. So, um, it's a lateral move. Yep. Uh, it's a good hire for Michigan. I, like, I'm not going to sit here and say it's not. Do I think he's the greatest developer of running backs? No, I think Mike Hart's a better developer than he is. But Sharon Moore said that he wants to be bigger on recruiting. He's a good recruiter. Yeah. Well, we've got natural segues going on. This is good. Look at our, our chemistry. It, that does feel like the mm-hmm. biggest thing. And I've seen a lot of back and forth on Twitter between both fan bases being like, if you're a Buckeye fan being like, oh, dude, now you guys care about recruiting? Or well, I thought recruiting <laughs> didn't matter. And then the other side being the other side. But yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like that's a play. And Shrone Moore has definitely come out and said that I, we want to attack the recruiting more than, than Harbaugh did, mm-hmm. which – it's really hard to look at Harbaugh's recruiting past because the last three years were so weird with him flirting with the NFL every season and all that. It, it hurt recruiting. It was hurting it. And it was hurting recruiting. Yeah. Whereas before that he was having, he had some really good classes. So yeah, kind of getting back to recruiting and then how that's going to impact the transfer portal. And yeah, it'll, I think it is a great, I think it's a, it's a good hire for Michigan. I mean, you Sharon Moore loves to run the football. So why would you not want to be a running backs coach here at Michigan? That just makes sense. Ryan Day tends to be more of a pass first coach and has a pass first mentality. So again, I don't know the story, but it feels like if you're looking at it that way, that makes sense. And I, and I will say this: like I, overall, I'm not upset about him leaving. I'm not. Uh, I think it's the easiest position to coach in college in football in general. Yeah, that was a hot um, take. I, I, all right, well, I'm going to go down the list real quick. Quarterback, wide receiver, O-line, D-line, edge, linebacker, very hard, DB. Running back is a very instinctual position. Very instinctual position. I I, I think you could go host these running backs, Bryce. Uh, with the room, <laughs> with, with with the room they have, you could go coast them. So, um, I would say, I would say wide receiver, receivers, maybe. No, because you got you think about it. You got route running. You have a release. You have branching. You have a different route con like on um on a con route concepts. So you have to choose one way or the other based on what the DB is. That that's way harder than me going to the the the, the B gap and having to make someone miss. Running backs, it's not it's a it's a very instinctual position. Very. Yes. Wow, look at this. We got a running back arguing against the running back position. I would say with running backs, though, you mm-hmm. have to run, catch, and then block. 
So that's three skill sets you have to coach and teach. Running is okay. R- okay. Like running is something you got or you don't. It, it's something you got or you don't. Okay. Uh, we, we, let's go back to our uh, our glory days in high school. Uh, there's a lot of running backs, Bryce, that I can name who are on the same team as you and I. They don't have the same instincts at running back as say me. Uh, 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 uh. Who else am I missing right here? Who was who are some uh some great South Christian running backs? <laughs> you know, it's like uh I don't how, how am I forgetting? Oh, we're horrible. Look at this. We've got all about those guys, but you get my point. Like you it, it's a you either have it or you don't. Everyone can't be a running back. You gotta like to do you gotta like to hit people first off. That's that's not a skill. That's something you got or you don't. You gotta be fast more times than not. That's something you got or you don't. Now, vision is one thing, but you can't teach vision. You either got it or you don't. That like uh, Blake Corum, the vision he has, the, the ability to cut that he has, everyone doesn't have that. Take Donovan Edwards, for instance. Donovan Edwards has nowhere near the vision nor the cutting ability of Blake. Nowhere near. That's not – you got it or you don't. It's instinctual. You're born with it. I mean, it's – Yeah. So I'm looking hmm? – I'm looking at his recruits. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting theory of the about them not panning out. A, I didn't. I totally forgot about this. Evan Pryor transferred. Yep. I don't. Did we talk about that? Transferred in December. Yeah, we talked about that. We did, and then okay. So James people. So yeah, looking at a lot of these recruits, a lot of them have transferred. There's a few in the league, so it's about. It's pretty much a toss up. Who's in the league? He has one running back in the league. Uh, he's got Dobbins, Dobbins, but it, that's it. I guess I'm looking at his all his overall. Runs. I'm talking strictly running backs. The only oh, reason okay. that all those other people is because he has an area, a general area that he recruits. Yeah, and some of those those, those aren't his act. He's some, he's a secondary on some of those. A lot of them he's the primary, but most of them he's a secondary. So yeah, a lot of the guys running back recruits have transferred or they switch positions. Uh, yeah, kid in Notre Dame. Like right here, yeah. It's I, I'm strictly saying Ohio State, you know. But um, so you, you, you had two running backs that became linebackers. Yeah, that, that's true. That yeah, ransom, master ransom Teague, safety, master yeah. Teague, yeah, master Teague didn't didn't pan out. So like I said, he, he he's behind. a good recruit. He's a good recruiter. He's a good coach, but yeah, him developing is not his high his high point. It's not. So here's the question. Yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm good. Head down, Hayden. All right. Here's the question. I saw on Twitter this morning that James Peoples, I think it was James Peoples, was following Michigan football on Instagram. I don't think he was ever recruited by Michigan. This begs the question of, are you worried about transfers? Are you worried about guys? Let me ask this question is twofold. Are you worried about current players transferring out? And then second question, are you worried about the recruits? that could have been hot first ball towards Ohio state because of him, maybe not following Michigan, but Ohio state losing them. No, Ohio state has gotten running back since the seventies. <laughs> Do you know, you're not worried about any transfers, any. I, I mean, I mean, I was already, I'm not worried, but I mean, I, I thought Dallin Hayden was going to transfer last year to Tennessee before the season even started. I think Dallin still might transfer um, after the spring. James Peoples. Um, it it would have it would be who him to stay at Ohio State, and here's the reason why. Oof. If if Dallin Hayden leaves in the spring, let, let, let's just let's do uh, a um scenario here. Let's say Dallin Hayden leaves after the spring, right? We both know Travion Henderson is leaving, and Judkins is leaving after this year. You will be the running back next year. You will be the guy. At the Ohio State University. Yeah. Uh, whereas, I mean, you think about it, Michigan, you, you still got Mullins. Um, you still have Ben Hall. You still have, I mean, and then you add on um, Marshall. Yep. I mean, that's a that's a four-deep room where at Ohio State, you, you know you're going to be the guy next year. And if Dallin Hayden stays, you know you're number one or number two. Yeah, uh, there's so, your pitch. yeah it, if you're listening, I mean, is it, yeah, I mean, if there's a chance that he leaves, then okay. 
but I I will never ever worry about running backs at Ohio State. Yeah, so I will not, not never. I've never had to worry about that. So you're not worried about any players leaving, who are who are who have the black stripe on right now. Anyone can leave except for Jenkins and Travion. I don't care. Okay. Like it, it, like this 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 is a, this is Ohio State football will be good for the years to come. This is a very specific year. Uh, barring injuries, James Peoples does not have any way on this on this year. He has no way on this year. So I'm not going to be upset. It, it'll be it'll be unfortunate. I'm not going to be upset about a kid leaving because the guy that recruited him is gone. I said the I said the same thing for the kids at Michigan when the, when all their coaches left. I'll say the same thing here. So. Yeah, I don't know. You know, man, it, it, it all depends. It all depends. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of off season left here. Again, it's it's May, and you guys have had far and away the most insane first couple weeks of the off season any school has had in recent history. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like let's oh yeah. go back to Thanksgiving. You guys lost to Michigan. You had the bowl week. You had the lean up to the bowl week that you start having transfers. McCord leaves. You get to the bowl week, and there's a ton of things that have happened between then. Mm. You have a disappointing performance against Missouri, and then offensively, got- offensively, <laughs> offensively, the defense showed up. Okay, fair. I'll give you that. Fair, and then and then your arch rival wins an incredible Rose Bowl game, wins the national championship, but then that night, Junkins. <laughs> announces <laughs> and then you get transfers coming in and and then all and then all these things are happening and then a eight year coach leaves to go to your arch rival it's been the most crazy off season for yeah football team i think I've and, ever and i'll tell it's you what Bryce. March. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you haven't played the spring game yet this has been one of the best off seasons ever, but I mean, any a, a lot of Michigan fans are going to say, "Well, you guys have been saying this for the last few years," and, and you know, what? fine, call it what you want. Now, this this clearly to the players because I'm just a fan, all right. So, like, I, I my words only mean so much. Clearly, this is lit a fire. This is going to light a fire between for those guys because I mean, you are a few weeks into spring practice now. The spring game is April thirteenth. Which is basically a month, almost a month, basically a month away, and then yep. you leave for the school that for these last few weeks you've been preaching to hate. So, um, in, in in all reality, I don't mind this. I, I, I him leaving changes nothing for this for this team and this program. Changes nothing. So, and at the same time, like I said, it is a good hire. I'm speaking from the Ohio State point point of things. This has changed nothing for us. It changes nothing. I, I, Junkins was a good running back before he came to Ohio State. He's a two-time leading SEC rusher. Travion Henderson is a good running back. It was going to be a good running back no matter where he went. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean. Are you worried that Alfred brings all the schemes? So, there, all right. Jay Book put that out there. I don't know if you saw that. I did not. Okay. Where he said that he had been negotiating for the last few weeks. Tony Alford went out there and said it's a lie. Now, like he actually went under his post and said that's a lie. <laughs> but um, oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Now, me personally, um, Tony Alford, I think you're a snake in the grass. I think you're the worst type of person. <laughs> but um, like if I if I, <laughs> like if I if I saw you in the grass, I cut your head off. But uh, how much of the scheme can you know? Uh, especially as the running backs coach. I so I mean, I, huh? I would assume a lot. Uh, in, a, in two, three weeks, I don't think so. Not Chip Kelly's playbook. Yeah. Oh, that's true. It is new playbook. Yeah, it'll be. I don't know, man. I, I, I'll be honest with you, and you. You, you and I were talking about this. We were texting about it before the news went public. Mm. 
my initial response was, I don't like this. I don't like this. I mean, this a is lot, a, but a lot man. of Michigan fans feel that way. Yeah. This dude's he was with he was with that dirty rat Urban Meyer, and now he's been with Ryan Day. Hey, he's my, he's my dirty rat. He's your he's dirty, my rat. dirty rat. Still a dirty rat. And <laughs> I, I, dude, I don't know. I'm I'm suspicious. I don't like ever since Al Washington left us. I don't like that idea. I don't like the idea of hiring Buckeyes. Now Al Washington you, used to be a player. Wait, 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 wait. This rivalry is what it is. Because a buck I went to no, Michigan. No, that's that's un- misunderstood history. That you you don't know the full story there. Why is that misunderstood? You're <laughs> you're Woody's boy. You are Woody's boy. Who is? Bo was. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm trying to get trying to change the subject here. That that what, actually what? bothers me a little bit that he was <laughs> Woody's guy. I know. That's history I refuse to believe. Well, I I think I think I think Bo gave a speech at Woody's uh retirement. <laughs> Yuck! Is that after he punched <laughs> the guy in the neck? Or that's, of course that's after we fired him. After you, Bryce, you know we you know we you know we we fire coaches. They don't gracefully leave. <laughs> <laughs> or they fake heart attacks or heart injuries. And hey, man, I, I saw I saw Urban on that sideline after that mission game. That man almost passed out. He did. He so, did. but no, you know. <laughs> And, and, and you know what, Bryce? And it's interesting because, you know, this is Jerome's first year, of course. He gets a Buckeye. Uh, Ryan Day, his first year, he got two Michigan guys. Oh, really? Is that, did it line up that way? Yeah, he got Greg Madison and uh, – Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, um, because Urban told him to, to get mm-hmm. Madison because they coached at Florida, I think. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, somewhere. Uh, how much do you think they're paying him? I mean, if they're paying at seven seventy five, yeah, I think yeah, it's gotta be close. It's gotta be close to a million. So Jim was making, oh, he was making nine, right? Mm-hmm. I think I think Sharon's only making around five. Yeah, it is. you're right. You're right. So yeah, part. there's money to be passed around, assuming that pool has mm-hmm. hasn't changed much. I um, I wanted to ask you this as a Michigan fan. That is I. You remember how I brought up what Mike Hart was paid and what Tony Alford was paid? Mike Hart is a top five Wolverine all time. Is that fair to say? I don't think he's top five, but he is a top ten. Is he top ten? He, he never won anything. That's his only down. Is that class like Chad Henney, Jake Long, Mike Hart? They never really won anything, but they are they're on the precipice of greats. Yes, he's a top three running back in Michigan history, though. That he's Probably. the all-time leading rusher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you okay. got him, Blake, Biak Patuka. I mean, uh, Tyron Wheatley. Tyron Wheatley. Um. Uh, uh, Chris. Um. Chris Perry. Chris Perry. There's well, a, he's, top, he's up there. He's up there. Top five running back of all time. So knowing that he's a Michigan legend, Michigan running back legend, and he's your running back coach, how does it feel knowing that you are about to pay an Ohio State coach almost twice as much as he got paid? And do you? Uh, how do you feel about that? So, like, do, I, you think, do you think it was disrespectful how much he was paid and and all that? Well, I think half a mil is isn't isn't too bad for for a running back coach. No, yeah. So I think he was. I think he did fine. He also came from Indiana, and Where he was the associate. That, he was the associate head coach. Was he? Yep. Okay. So I, mean, I fact checked it yesterday. <laughs> Came from Indiana. I've looked at uh, Alford's resume. I mean, we played running back at Colorado State. Played in the league. Uh, I think before, I know before us, he was at Notre Dame. That's all I remember. Yes, yeah, so he coached at Notre Dame for four years, five years. Washington, Iowa State, Kent State. Mm. So he's been around a bit longer. So. Yeah, is Mike Hart a legend? Yes. Do you deserve to get paid a big time coach's salary for that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think this guy's got a resume. It's a longer resume. It is. Yeah. It's a much longer resume. But um, yeah, man, you know, good for you guys. Uh, like I said, um, I think Ohio State can hire Boo Boo the Fool if they want to for running back coach. I don't care. I, I who's who's the guy? 
Who do you want next? What are the message boards saying? The Buckeye uh, beat writers. Well, if you talk to fans, Bryce, they'll tell you they want Eddie George. And. Ooh, question, because I saw that. If you go in and you show an 18-year-old a picture of 27, do they know who that is? You and I do. But we're 30 plus. Does an 18-year-old know who that 27 is? In the same way, do his dad will. Fair. In the same way, do guys know who number two is in '97 for Michigan? Charles. I, I think you listen. If you're a kid and you look, young men out there, young boys, listen, li- listen to Uncle Garrison here. If you claim to love this sport as much as you do, and you don't know two Hall of Famers, two NFL Hall of Famers. Uh, two Heisman winners named Charles Woodson and Eddie George. I I question your love for the game. I question your love right. for the game. Because Eddie Eddie George is at HBCU, right? Isn't Tennessee it? State, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And we could pay. Him, I mean, we could we could pay him a mill. I mean, <laughs> yeah, money's not an issue. If you yeah, it's not an issue. But um, w- one name I've heard of, Bryce, and one name I'm behind is Robert Glipsy. Now he's a running back coach over at Alabama right now. Um, you do, I think, if you get that, um, first off, you give him the chance to coach the best backfield in college football. Um, also, we can, I, we can we can pay it more than Alabama can. Ohio State has more money than, than Alabama does. Mm. And and if, for Ohio State, you keep that Southern pipeline. Yeah, it's big. Ohio like. As much as I, this upcoming class has some good Ohio State running backs. I think two of them are in the top ten this year, actually, from the twenty twenty five class, like guys like Bo Jackson. But um, that is his name, by the way. But um, I think Southern running backs are built different. I just do. I think Southern. I think like running backs from like Texas, Florida, and California are just built different. The, I, I, that's just my opinion. So, um, and I think it's smart to keep that southern pipeline, like how um, Tramore has been trying to get into Texas, yeah, uh, because because Ohio State has a pipeline to Texas. So, um, yeah, Dobbins from Texas. Uh, he's Henderson's from, Texas. from Virginia, though. No, yeah, he, he's from Virginia, but uh, Dobbins from Texas, James Peoples from Texas, Gary Wilson's from Texas. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, it's a good pipeline to have. Also, uh, I saw you guys got a safety back. Yeah, have we talked about that? We haven't talked about that. We've, we've been <laughs> gone, buddy. I love it. I mean, with Sab gone, I, that guy he he was seeing him coming in the game a lot last year. I was thinking like, wow, he's he's got meaningful minutes with with as much talent as we have at safety. Mm-hmm. Having him in the game as much as he was and making the plays, like knocking Ibuka on his back sending him to mm-hmm. outer space was awesome I, I don't know how you go to outer space when you land on the turf that's just wrong that doesn't make sense but okay yeah his head bounced off and shot you, you, you have it you have a degree bryce come on <laughs> <laughs> so i'm excited he's back i think we we definitely needed that the safety mm-hmm. reinforcement there and i mean he's he's you know he, he entered the draft did he tests and realized that he's getting drafted wait, wait, and this is where i come in because I, I talked to my man, Nick, a Michigan fan, on uh, Twitter the other day. Because we were talking about the reason he said he came back and he talked about his injury. Now, you played all 15 games. You got hurt the first play of the game, minorly hurt. Not injured, you got hurt. Not injured, hurt against Alabama on the first play of the game. Now, you said that the reason you are coming back to Michigan was because of your injury. Now, you had that injury – before you declared, you still declared you were going to go undrafted. You don't have the tape. You don't have the stats. I don't think you're that guy either. Um, so I, I just I don't I don't mean to be that guy that's saying you're faking an injury. I think I saw you get hurt. I saw you get hurt. But I am going to call cap on why you came back. You came mm-hmm. back because you got an nil deal, Bryce. Caught you red-handed. Don't want to hear anything else about Ohio State players getting paid. Um, you got an NIL deal. Keon Sab left. 
What does that mean? More playing time for you. Because Keon Sav is the second best safety on that team. He's better than Makari Page. He's definitely better than you. Um, you were going to go undrafted, bro. Yeah, I don't know why he which loves, means, which, loves which means you which means you were going to be selling cars, and and that's what it is. Yeah, I he, I don't when he said he was entering the draft, I think everyone was a little surprised. I don't know why he declared. I you're right, he doesn't have the tape. Uh, the irony is beautiful mm. that he signs an NIL deal with a after Dutch what you said. When what, what are you talking about? Because I was talking about, about Denzel how, about Denzel Burt, and you were oh, chast. Oh, but that was because you were like, oh, players come back because it's Ohio State, not because of the money. At which point I was no, like, well, well, no. You're telling me money had, didn't have anything to do with that? Do you think money had anything? Do you think money had anything to do with Blake Corn back last year? I yeah, but I'm not saying. But I didn't say like, oh, he's just coming back because he wants to just win. It's not about the money. I think he literally wanted to come back. He also, it's NFL. The running back market in the NFL is isn't great. That was his thing. It depends Denzel on who Burks you. It, 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 it depends on who you are. Yeah, but Denzel Burks a round one, round two draft pick. He's not coming back making nothing. Yeah, well, but the, but think about that. If you are a round one, round two guy, yeah, you're going to get compensated more. But he's coming back, Bryce, because he's he, he wants to right the wrongs. And I'm saying, and well, and, if, and for this guy, he's coming back for the money because he said, oh, he said to help with Michigan win a championship. Let me tell you this right now, Bryce and everyone else in the, in the Michigan fan base, you ain't win the national championship in 2024. I'm going to do that right now. Wait, are you saying Quentin Johnson said this or Blake? Yes, Blair? he said to help my team win a national championship. Quentin Johnson, I'm trying to tell you, you are not winning a national championship this year. Oh, write that down. Write that down. You're not. Yeah, I know. And, 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 and if you don't believe me, put your NIL deal on it. Put that up. <laughs> I do think it's more ironic that Keon Sab got a Mercedes and it's like, could we not set him up with that? There's a Mercedes oh, yes. and a Lexus dealership <laughs> in Ann Arbor. Like, can we not just set I him saw up with that? that? Cause I know I heard he got two million to go down there, and that's that's crazy. Good for you. Go take that money. But yeah, really, we couldn't come in and give him a million and a C class. Are you serious? No, Bryce. You you guys are transformational, not transactional. No, do you like? I'm gonna make a shirt out of that. We we develop. You guys deposit. That's <laughs> why. Just you gotta take that out of here. So I was gonna take that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the design here. Oh man. Um. All right. You know. Uh, you know, I, I think I think all the I think all the funny business is done now for the fall season. I think uh, I mean, of course, I, I'm assuming no. how's it? It's spring. I think, I mean, the I mean, portal opens up here in a couple weeks. I mean, I mean, that's so true. But how many names are going to be in it, dude? I I I think it high, level high level oh, names, high yeah. level names. Oh yeah, you think so? Because I don't. There won't be any quarterbacks in there. We'll see. We'll see how spring practices go. New coaches, new money out there. Yeah, and the NCAA you, you, has basically come out and said that they're not going to hit anybody for NIL stuff anymore because of everything that happened to Tennessee. Like that's an incre- that's an insane statement. The NCAA is just like, oh, we can't do anything. So well, you know what? Well, you now know, is going to be like, let's just go give money out to everybody. Which that's 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 where we're at now. I'm gonna tell you what because I, I want to talk to you about this. Maybe we can we can go into depth and there's go into depth some other time. Maybe we have four minutes. Why not? We got we got time. Um, on that subject, the instance really dug themselves a hole by not doing anything about, um, kind of policing NIL, which we both agree. We both, I think we both agree that NIL should be policed to an extent, but some governance. Yes. Yes. At the same time, I liked, but I liked what they did by not doing it. And this is why. Everyone like you wants to complain about the NCAA. Yes. And think they should be gone. Yes. Okay, fine. We leave this topic alone. We're gone off of this. And then you see what happens and now everyone wants to complain and now everyone wants to instantly do something about it. So, I mean. I don't. <laughs> I, I want the NCAA gone. And then I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and want them back when things don't go my way with things like NIL. That's not what I'm saying. I want when the, if the NCAA goes and college football can set up its own entity, they will set up mm-hmm. a governing body that best fits the interests of the sport. The NCAA does not seek the best that, that, no that that the interest of the power four. 
That's fine. This, that's this, 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 that's this, okay. this, this does nothing about D three, D two. It helps no one. It doesn't help basketball. It doesn't but help. That's doesn't fine. help. It doesn't help cricket. It doesn't help rifles and pistols teams. That's help fine. Them. This is college football. There isn't the business. We say that all the time. It's the reason why people say players should get paid because it's a business. Businesses don't just aren't just going to sit by and carry the water for failing business units. And failing business units are non revenue sports. So there's got to be a separation. Now, can schools still pay if they want to? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, when Saban and Alabama were at the Hill. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. He said that the school is operating at a $40 million deficit for non-revenue sports, and football has to offset that. If a business is losing $40 million somewhere, you would cut that business. Like the WBA? Profitable. What? I'm not going to get into that. But you're not. <laughs> It's just it's crazy. So do I? I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying that college, you know, men's soccer or women's field hockey should be wiped off. But like, let's also understand the place that they have. Yeah, college football is college football. College football is what the third most pop, second or third most. Popular it's king. Sport college football is king. Yeah, NFL, college football. You probably pick your lane with NBA and, and baseball and whatnot. Premier League. Premier. Well, yeah, I, I'm talking about just in the U.S. Okay. And. So, so like that, that is that is king, and and this up was up another conversation. But get the NCAA out. Of here. We'll go down. We'll go down a rabbit hole if we did that. We will. But, Can um, I get the last minute and a half, last minutes to talk about Michigan basketball? <sighs> so we we recording that recording this on on Thursday last night. Michigan lost to Penn State. Michigan went eight and twenty four. Shout out Kobe. Went eight and twenty four this season. Garrison three years ago. When so that would have been Howard's first or second year. Michigan was coming off being a top ten program in college basketball under John Beeline. Yes. John Beeline left. John Howard took over. Perennial Final Howard, Four. Perennial Final Four team. Final Fours in twenty thirteen and twenty eighteen. Now we're in this position where we go eight and twenty four, and I watched last night, and it was so unbelievably frustrating that it made me actually dislike college basketball until I turned on and watched Michigan State and Minnesota today and I saw how good basketball is operated, how good basketball is played. Michigan basketball is so unbelievably frustrating. And I just I I can't I can't believe we're at this place now. Ward Manuel, you got heat all year. Do the right thing. You know what that right thing is. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs>